Can y'all see it? The branch mm -hmm. kind of comes yeah. over. Up. Oh, wow. There he's just moving, oh, yeah. You. It's October in the Rio Grande Valley. Just check this one. These folks have come from near and far to the Edinburgh Wetlands World Birding Center. Let's go. To appreciate a wealth of flying colors. Oh, right there. It's teensy. They just spotted a second U.S. record. But these nature tourists aren't here for the birds. Never seen it in the U.S. The flying things they're after are butterflies. And this is just one stop on the annual Texas Butterfly Festival. Okay, good. South Texas is like heaven to birders. Uh, it's also pretty spectacular for butterflies. Here we have a skipper. You can see more species of butterflies. White peacock. Than anywhere else in the United States. Oh yeah. It's just another aspect of the, the wildlife watching that's so fantastic here in the valley. This is the malachite that we saw earlier. It uh, brings attention to uh, nature uh, and is also a great economic support for our community. The popularity of chasing butterflies is a fairly new phenomenon. Another one. Butterfly field guides didn't really start coming out until the mid-90s, I guess. And like birding, you eventually start checking them off a list and that sort of thing. These tropical ones have been seen at the park. Butterflies are really birders that have gone over to the dark side. It's, it's just a progression. Right here. Today I found four or five lifers, butterflies I've never seen before, and it's a great, great thrill. Butterfly watching also draws those who just want to relax and enjoy some of nature's small wonders. You just can't help but be interested in it. I think they're beautiful. I just like the colors. They're so pretty and they're so fragile and short-lived. Though fragile indeed, one particular butterfly is known for its epic annual migration. Right up on top. Monarch. The monarch. Each fall, millions of monarchs funnel through Texas from as far north as Canada and route to their wintering sites in central Mexico. Along this central flyway, monarchs can be seen in flight or taking rest stops along the way. That was a bunch of them. Catching sight of a monarch roost is something that landowners like Dobb and Kay Cunningham look forward to. It's always a big thrill when they start coming in. This part of Texas is kind of plain but there is a beauty in this country that you have to be patient and wait for, and the monarchs are one of those. I didn't know they were so unique and complicated, and it is quite a phenomenon. That these delicate insects can fly up to 3,000 miles and somehow converge on the same patch of mountains in Mexico is one of the miracles of nature. One of the most unique migrations that I've ever heard of. But the miraculous monarch migration is in trouble. We still have masses of them. They're still coming, but not near the numbers. It brings joy to me to, to see them coming in great distress when I think the numbers have fallen. What Texas ranchers have noticed has been confirmed by surveys. The numbers that are returning back to Mexico have declined considerably. Monarch numbers have dropped to a fraction of those recorded when monitoring began in the early 1990s. While there are concerns about illegal logging and cold snaps impacting wintering monarchs, their biggest challenges may be those they face on their return in the spring and their dependence on a single plant for reproduction. During the spring migration, we're not too aware of it. We're, we don't see them in masses the way we see them in the fall. But that's when it's critical, because they're returning from Mexico, they're trying to lay eggs, and the only host plant is uh, milkweed or Asclepias. Because it's an international animal, you know, Canada, the United States, and Mexico, there are so many variables. We can help Texas lead the efforts in the recovery of the monarch butterfly. As part of a tri-national restoration effort, Texas Parks and Wildlife has launched a native pollinator conservation plan. Everybody has a part to play in the recovery of the monarch, and that's the beauty of it. It doesn't matter whether you live in the city or in the country. Uh, you can help restore habitat. It's decisions we make. Planting flowers in a garden is a great start. The best we can do is to be thoughtful about how we manage land and, you know, 
do we need to mow all the milkweed? Do we, you know, do we cut down all the flowers in the fall in the roadside ditches, or do we, you know, leave some things for those butterflies that are coming back through? And I think the more we understand that, the more we'll we'll be able to do our part. Look, there's a couple of milkweed bugs on the backside of this. Park interpreter Craig Hensley is certainly doing his part. Craig oversees volunteers who monitor milkweed, monarchs, and other butterflies each spring at Guadalupe River State Park. Isn't that a gorgeous butterfly? Oh, look, a monarch right here, right there. Today is one of our butterfly surveys. Have you seen any eggs or larvae? No. We also monitor a patch of milkweed in the park uh, for the monarch larval monitoring project. Don't you get that one, I'll, I'll get, get this, this one. one right. We count milkweeds, look for monarch eggs. We're just coming out of a drought and our milkweed has been low, so we're really excited because we're seeing more and more stopping here and they are laying eggs. Here it is, right here. Oh, cool. A lot of people feel if they follow the monarch that they get a, an idea about the health of the whole ecosystem. These are arrivals from Mexico. They're kind of beat up. Yeah. You know, you start looking at the natural world and you see declines in bumblebee populations and, and other native pollinator populations. You see what's happening with the honeybee. And All right, let's go out to the patch. You realize that, you know, there's a delicate balance of the natural world. And so that's the monarch egg. It's amazing how much of that balance focuses on very, very tiny little insects that, that we are uh, highly dependent upon. Without them, we have potentially a lot less food in our grocery stores and it probably costs a lot more. So the picture of the monarch is a bigger picture of pollinators in general. A lot to learn about monarchs in Texas um, as they pass through north and south. Let's keep going. Though focused on the big picture, for Craig, hey, this is also personal. Did you get the two monarch adults? I have two grandchildren, and um, I don't want them to grow up without the chance to see a monarch butterfly. And my fear is that that possibility exists. I think the world becomes a lesser place if we watch things like the monarch disappear or become rare. Golly, look at that, right there. Oh. They're gorgeous little animals. and now if we could just see another hundred of them. And a great gateway animal, for, for, especially for kids getting into nature. How many? A lot. A lot. Next spring when she gets back on the border, Texas, Carol Culler also uses monarchs to introduce kids to nature. So if you'll put your finger up in the air, you don't want to? At first, they're a little afraid of having it touch their finger. And by the end of the presentation, they all want you to put the butterfly on their finger. You ready? OK. And there they you all want to say bye to Monarch and let Ooh, it go. Whoa. Carol participates in a citizen science project, tagging monarchs during fall migration. This little tag then traces where that butterfly came from, One, eight, seven. what day it was tagged, how many miles that it's flown down to Mexico. There he goes. Okay. Happy trails. We yeah. don't have all the answers. We don't know every detail of this process. We do get a lot of data just from that one tag. There's a soldier right in front of you there. So amazing. Meanwhile, just downriver, Terrific. the Texas Butterfly Festival wraps up with a splash of color at Falcon State Park. <laughs> oh, awesome. I've never seen anything like this. We've seen well over 100 species here in this garden over a three-day period. I've seen more butterflies in one day than I've seen in my whole life put together. A lot of butterflies. Among the bounty of butterflies Thanks, Ma. and one fancy moth it's a beautiful one. are also many monarchs gassing up the butterfly garden before heading to Mexico. When he opens out, it looks like a little jet plane. Our manager wanted to do some landscaping in the park. I said, well, why not? Let's make a butterfly garden. And it grew and grew and grew. Till now we have about an acre of plants, all native right here to this area. It's been successful beyond our wildest imaginations. Whether by planting milkweed or other native flowering plants. See the white bar on the wing? Whether by studying butterflies or just appreciating them. Better angle from over here. Watching out for these colorful insects is something anyone can do. There she goes. Building that awareness Bye. will hopefully make a difference. In return, butterflies just might remind us life is fragile and amazing with much to admire in the smallest details. They're really awesome animals.